Good day, church family, and welcome to the LJCC update for Thursday, August the 13th. Well, it was a great Sunday. So much blessing to get compressed into that time. Thank you for joining us to be part of our, our prayer and our blessing for our teachers who are going back to school. And I hope that you continue the message of we need you. We're praying for you. We're hoping for you. We have faith in you, but above all else, we need you. And I hope that you reach out to your friends and neighbors who are teachers and that you communicate that message as these days continue to move forward. And don't lose track of it because it's going to continue to be a challenge as the days and weeks and even months move ahead. So let's keep them in our prayers. I'm really thankful for your tuning in and, again, your affirmation for the things that went on during the service. And I want to thank particularly Clara for her time and the passion she brought into her interview. Well, it wasn't quite what we were used to, but our, our annual business meeting came off and it was a success because of your flexibility and your help. So big thanks for all that you did to make sure that that happened as well as possible. And particularly for those of you who not only tuned in, but participated in our uh, ability through text messaging to, to be part of the meeting. Well, coming up this Sunday, August the 16th, is our Back to School Blessing for our students, also a group that we need to really keep in our prayers. We don't have all the details worked out yet, but we will be doing our apple tree apples, so just kind of keep, stay tuned in for exactly how those are going to go. Our service Sunday will include an interview with the uh, superintendent of BISD, Danny Massey, and we'll be talking about uh, looking into a new, uh, new look for our, our prayer walk. First of all, I want to ask you to let this be an opportunity. I mentioned this on Sunday. I want to remind you to invite family, friends, coworkers, neighbors. Uh, it can be as simple as sharing the text message that you receive with the link to the service. Um, but in reality, you can point them to our website, which might be a really good thing to do. You can send a link to the website in a text message or an email. But really, all of that starts with you paving the way with a conversation with those folks that you'd like to invite. And I just really want to challenge you to invite one person that you know that has students in their family who you know need the encouragement of prayer, inviting one family to join us on Sunday. They may say no, they may say yes and, and choose to not do it. But, but I want to challenge you to invite one family to participate in that engage in those conversations, and then figure out how you're going to, to link them to our YouTube live service. Or, of course, if you're planning on being there in person and you've invited them, there's no reason that you can't invite them to do that, in which case they need to take a look at the Welcome Back video on the website as well. Secondly, I want you to make it a, I'm really asking you to make it a priority to, to have your family together to this. If you're comfortable, come in person. But if you're going to watch, have the whole family watch, bring the children in. And I know sometimes the service is so adult oriented that it can be difficult for our children to stick with it. We're going to do our best to engage the whole family, but really we need your help to say, nope, this Sunday we're going to sit and come, whether in person and, and do that, or we're going to sit and, uh, as Taylor always said, sit in our pajamas and enjoy our worship together and be there on the couch together and, and pray together for our students. Well, for the last two years, this has been the Sunday, this coming up Sunday, that our, we have been part of the Loving BISD prayer walk and similar efforts that have gone on in the surrounding school districts around us. This year, as with so many things, this will be a little bit different to participate in, but I'm going to be encouraging you to participate in praying and walking while you pray or praying while you walk um, to, for our schools and our teachers and our students, just what's going to go on. Haley Yates sent a, a Facebook message, I believe it was, a few weeks ago that had this really neat idea of PPEs for our schools. And you know uh, protective equipment is, gets that an acronym, but what this an acronym was for was for park and pray every day. Well, we're going to join in that challenge and, and ask you after services and after maybe after you've finished lunch this week to 
get into comfortable clothes, get a good hat on and some good shoes on. And I want you to drive to at least one of uh, our district's campuses or again, if you live in one of the surrounding districts to drive to one of those campuses. Maybe it's the one nearest to you. Maybe it's the one that you have a teacher that's connected to. Maybe it's one that you have students or grandchildren who are students or again, just some neighborhood kids and you wanna be at that campus. And I'm gonna encourage you to drive to that campus and park. Now, not everybody's gonna be able to do this and I realize that it's going to be hot. It's always hot in August and it's going to be hot, but I want to encourage you just kind of envision if you would uh, God saying, Jericho, I want you to walk around, uh, Joshua, I want you to walk around the city of Jericho. I want you to envision the idea that you can be God's warrior for the good that he wants to bring, the blessing he wants to bring, for the way we want to bring his protection and his provision to our schools. And I would, I'd like for you to, now, now let's be sure and say, not seven times. And you don't need to do it seven days in a row unless you want to. Let's be sure and say I'm not telling you you can't. But if you would walk around the outside of that campus and pray for the things that are going to be going on there, I realize it might be quite a walk. Again, they've, they've got our campuses and we're thankful that our campuses are pretty well secured, much more so than they used to be. So you might be walking on the streets that surround it and that's okay. And again, if you just wanna park there in the parking lot, maybe walk up to the front door, but we would like for you to be on location and praying for our schools this Sunday afternoon. Just wanna ask you when you, when you finish or at some point during that process, if you would uh, take a selfie of yourself there in front of the school sign so we can know where you are. And if you would, if you're able to post that on our Facebook page, or if you're not able to do that, to email it to us at office at ljchurch.org or any way that you want to get us that photo and we'll get it onto Facebook. Really want to spread the good news that, that we're praying for our schools and celebrate all the schools that we've prayed for. And, and also, I, I personally want us to be sure we cover as many, if not all, of the schools in, in, the, in the school district that our church building is in. And so having that log of where you've been, it may be that it takes a few days, but we'll try to get around to all those schools. Also, as a part of our loving BISD efforts, I want to remind you that we've been notified. We, we have, as one of our big kickoff of events every year for loving BISD, Belinda Tavry organizes our folks and our ladies have been so good about providing food. We're not gonna be able to take our own food, but the school districts has said, if someone wants to cater a meal that can be delivered to the school, then, then we can do that. And so we're trying to raise money to cater a meal for uh, our adopted school, Boydell, AP Boydell Elementary, down the street from us. I uh, wanna encourage you, if you could reach out to Belinda and, and get her some funds to help cover that. I believe that's gonna be happening next Monday or Tuesday, so we need to get on to that pretty quickly. Belinda Tavry needs some money to help, help us uh, uh, cater that meal for all the teachers and staff at AP Boydell. Wanna keep that tradition up, and wanna bless them, and even though it's gonna take a little extra effort. And I appreciate Belinda stepping in to, to do the extra effort to make that possible. Wanna, bringing our, our, our emphasis back here to church, wanna continue to ask for you to pray. I asked last week, our, our Kids for Christ ministry team met last Sunday and, and please pray as they go through the planning of restarting some of our other elements of our children's programming. Again, we've had some really successful classes uh, some in-person and some Zoom classes with our, our grade school kids uh, this entire summer. Uh, but we're, we're looking to expand and looking how that's going to adapt into the fall. And there are challenges to that, as you know, that are, are more than just COVID challenges with the way the school day is going to be changing uh, coming up this fall. So be praying for the Kids for Christ ministry team. But particularly, you, if you are a parent of, of one of the children ages that are part of our children's ministry, our Kids for Christ ministry, or whether you're a teacher for one of those classes, you should have received by email a survey about your willingness and different ideas and getting your input on how we can adjust things to, to fit into the, the COVID protocols that we need to follow, but also to bring uh, education uh, opportunities to our children and, and blessing to our, to our children's ministry. So if you haven't received that email, 
uh, please reach out to Kevin Hunter or to Sharon Ritchie. If you have received it, please turn that in. Fill them in thoughtfully, prayerfully, but turn them in, uh, those surveys in, as soon as possible. I know that that group's going to be meeting again this Sunday, uh, and I appreciate that, that group's dedication to, to trying to get things moving and also their dedication to hearing from you and doing what's right. Also, a, a request to continue to remember in prayer our adult education ministries and our life group ministries as they also are trying to anticipate what things will look like as the fall starts. If you need to give some input or if you want to get more information, uh, either Chad Abney with adult education or Mark Davis with life groups. And please encourage them as they consider how best to do this. But again, you may have some information you want or some input you want to give. As we start our time of prayer request, we want to be thankful that Patty Pan, who was anticipating gallbladder surgery last week, has had a successful surgery, is home doing her best to, to take her uh, recovery seriously and make sure she gets the rest that she needs. She's at home recovering. We want to pray for, want to, we're really thankful that that's gone, that she, that surgery has been a success. We also continue to celebrate and continue to thank God that we don't have any new COVID cases to report that have been told to us here at the church of our church members or again, family or friends connected to our church members. We do, however, have some things that we want to lift up in prayer, and I need you to be engaged with God in this process of praying for these folks. Last week I mentioned that Joanne Philo had found a, a mass on her spleen, and they had sent, done a biopsy, and were waiting on results. Well, they didn't get the results back that they were looking for on that mass. In fact, it's been diagnosed, at least preliminary, as a form of lymphoma. She will be going this Friday to a blood oncologist, I believe up at MD Anderson, and they're going to be run, running additional tests starting again tomorrow, Friday. So let's keep Joanne in our prayers. Also, as we announced on Sunday, we've gotten discouraging news about Bernice Skinner, whose heart seems to not really be able to keep up, no matter what they're doing, to help it to keep up with uh, what her body needs. And so please remember Bernice, and remember, Jack, put them in God's hands because there are no better hands for them to be in. We want to continue to remember Edna Allen, uh, who has now been officially admitted to St. Luke's Brazosport to their rehab floor. Uh, she's reporting that she's working hard, and, and we are really asking for your prayers for her, that she'll have the strength she needs to, to go through the, the therapy that they're suggesting so that she can get stronger. And, and again, God's healing touch in her life. Sandra Mullins continues to request our prayer. She is scheduled to see her surgeon uh, next Monday uh, for continued assessment of, of that heart valve replacement surgery and probably, hopefully, to schedule a, uh, oh, excuse me, she has scheduled a needed test for that for coming up on the 17th. So let's keep her uh, in prayers for that as well. Finally, I ask that you continue to remember my friend in Central Texas, Mel Kelder, who's still needing your prayers. We want to express our condolences. If you were tuned in on Sunday, you heard about Danny Randolph's mother, Kate Randolph. We want to continue to remember that family. Services were Tuesday, um, and I don't know exactly the plans of the family as they return home or head their separate ways, but let's keep that whole family in our, process, in our prayers as they continue to grieve the loss of Kate. We have some birthdays to celebrate this week. First of all, Barbara Williams' birthday is today, August the 13th, so happy birthday, Barbara. Kelly McBrayer's birthday will be Saturday the 15th, and Harold Cox will celebrate a birthday on this Sunday. So if you're going to be here, I'm pretty sure Harold will be here, I think. Maybe a couple of daughters will be here. We want to celebrate with Harold on Sunday. Dustin McDaniel's birthday is next Tuesday, and also next Tuesday is Janice Stewart. But that's not all, because next Tuesday is also Clyde and Janice's anniversary. Clyde, you better be on the stick. Don't you let her down, because uh, that's a very special day for both of you and especially for her. 
Well, Larry and Katie Kimmerling are also celebrating an anniversary, and that'll be this Friday. It'll be tomorrow, uh, the 14th. And you'll want to extend a special measure of congratulations to Sharon Ritchie, who's managed to stay married to yours truly for 35 years, coming up next Monday on the 17th of August. We want to ask you to remember to check our website regularly and visit our Facebook page and get involved there. I want to really encourage you to download the Caring and Sharing every week, but I want to point you again to the meal train links that are there. Download your Caring and Sharing. Look probably the second or third page. There'll be uh, internet links there for our meal train account. I've been made aware that we are in need of some additional folks to help support that. And so if you have more questions about that, don't hesitate to get in touch with Corliss Hicks as well. Want to continue to remember Lindsay Phillips and the Hope House project there in Porto Alegre. And again, one more time, I encourage you to send a card or a letter to Ozzie and Taylor. Encourage them as uh, they get started there at ACU and particularly to say thank you for their efforts to bless us this summer. So let's pray together. Our Father and our God, we, we thank you for all these birthdays, people that you have blessed us through their lives. We thank you for all these anniversaries and for folks who have set such a great uh, example of, of unity in marriage. I want to thank you particularly for Sharon and the way she is a blessing, your blessing, in my life and has been for so many years. It just life, My life wouldn't be the same without her. Father, we continue to say thank you that we're not hearing of new COVID cases in our circle, in our sphere, although we know that there are many still going on. We thank you that Patty is doing well and recovering from her surgery. Father, our hearts want to lift Joanne Fellow up to you. We want to ask for your healing touch in her life, and particularly your presence to be with her as she walks this path. Father, we lift up Edna. We ask for strength. Father, we lift up Sandra Mullins. We pray that, that the pieces will start to move a little faster so that she can get um, the relief that she needs in that intervention of that surgery. We lift up Mel to you. We lift up Helen Cole to you and ask for your blessings on she. Father, I want to lift up Bernice. Uh, our hearts are broken by this latest news. We've watched her fight so hard. Father, we want to see the way that, that you're glorified through her life and through this situation. Again, Father, we pray your special measure of presence with she and Jack. And in the process of coming to her, we pray that you would communicate our love and our affection for each of them. Father, we lift up Kate Randolph's family. Thank you for a life well lived, and we thank you for a legacy of generations of faithful and good people who are following in her footsteps. We lift all these things up to you. We pray your blessings on our congregation, I want to pray your blessings on each of the people who are watching and listening. Pray that you will, again, make yourself evident, that you will fill them with, fill them with your spirit, and that they will feel effective in your service, even in these incredibly unusual times. We thank you for Jesus, who makes it possible for us to be called into your service. And so it's in his name that we all pray and we all say, amen and amen. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you Sunday.